Thank you guys for joining us this morning. Uh, hopefully get a cup of coffee. We have decaf coffee out of request. Now if you start requesting cinnamon rolls or start requesting uh, you know, some other things, we may draw the line of saying it, but uh, um, that, that was requested. And so uh, we, uh, and it's good to have it, it's good to have choices. But I am Larry, I'm superintendent. Uh, we try to have a monthly coffee with Larry on the first Friday of each month. And they say it's the first Friday. So we're excited that you're here. We want to give an update. Um, uh, basically, of uh, uh, what's going on in District Wide. Um, and we will give you plenty of opportunity to ask questions. Um, we've had some from our live stream uh, folks that uh, see a topic and they'll call later in the day, hey, you talked about this, what about this? That's fair. So I'm trying to be transparent, bring this together, stronger together, trying to make it a reality. If you're um, our folks, would you just introduce ourselves as far as our District Wide? Just so everybody kind of knows folks here. Joe, would you start? Jefferson City High School, the kids are back now. Um, the building, I think you know, is probably is divided into areas A through G to phase the construction. So um, that's the way the building's divided. The contractor is working on area G right now. Uh, you see the fences are up. You see temporary stairs and ramps around. Kids have to be routed around construction, uh, not through it. So big effort going on over there by Naples, the construction manager, to maintain safety. All construction workers have a tag on their hat uh, and they're in confined areas where the construction is going and the kids and the faculty are occupying the other areas of the building. Uh, I mentioned A through G, that's areas of the building, but the contractors are working in phases. Phase one uh, is area G along Lafayette Street. The top floor of that side of Lafayette Street is complete. Kids have moved in, faculty's in there and classes are going, uh, as well as the six mobile classrooms out in the uh, parking lot along JF Drive. So those are what we call the swing space, and that's, that's going on right now. Uh, from now till uh, mid-October, they will finish the other areas of Area G. So if you were to walk in there today, it's completely gutted, uh, light fixtures, tile flooring, HVAC, everything's gutted. 
and being replaced. So the, the lower levels of Area G and Little Theater um, definitely look like a construction site and those are fenced off, walled off actually, uh, from kids entering those areas. Uh, the that finishes in October. Uh, the next phase will be Nichols Career Center. We call that areas A and B. The first floor of that will, will be the next part of the building that goes down. It will be sequestered. Um, <coughs> students and faculty will continue to use for this whole project the, the trailers in the parking lot as well as the top floor of area G. But uh, Nichols Career Center is the next that goes, goes down. That will be late October. Um, after, after late October, phase three kicks in, which is area F. Area F is the science labs, which is uh, what we call the north side of the building towards the parking lots. Uh, this summer, a lot of asbestos was abated out of the building, including those science labs. All the cabinetry was moved out, all the lighting was taken down. All that had to go back in after the abatement was put out because they're still making the, the science casework in the factory. So the kids are literally in there with its concrete floor, the lighting's hanging, but the ceilings are gone. We had to move all the cabinetry back in, put it back up, have science this semester, and then it'll go down again when the, when the science casework arrives. <clears throat> uh, after that, phase four will be the kitchen, cafeteria, sped, um, life skills gym, admin locker rooms. That will be a, an enormous phase, phase four. And after that, phase five will be in the summer of 2019. Nichols Career Center, top floor, uh, and, and that, that's the end of the phases. So what, everything I just described is renovation. In late October of this year, we'll also start new construction at the high school. When I say new construction, I mean the connector between the two buildings, the media center. There's another elevator tower being added. Um, that's new construction. That will start late October, so that area between the buildings will be completely torn up. Uh, and that will last through the duration of the project till uh, January of 2020. Let me know if I say this wrong, Jason. Um, the simultaneous to the area G was bid and awarded and is under construction. The design team has been finishing the documents for the rest of Jefferson City High School. Those were just finished literally last week. So even though construction is going on, the design team has been working and uh, those are out on the street. Uh, being advertised and will be bid uh, September what's September 18th. We'll receive bids on those. Is that right? Yes. September 18th, we'll receive bids on those. Uh, so there will be a whole other wave of contracts awarded. And by the way, when I talk about contracts awarded, it's amazing to see how many local contractors are working on this project. You can see their trucks. I see the payroll uh, go by, and I see the the uh, percent of completion reports turned in. So. It's amazing how many local contractors, uh, even, even you know, typically a project, this building or across the street when these projects were done, there would be one mechanical firm, one electrical firm, one gen general contractor. Well, these, these projects are the size. We have multiple generals, trucks you'll see, multiple electricians, multiple plumbers. Uh, so that's, that's very hard to see and something, frankly, that we really hoped for during the campaign. Uh, once those bids are, that I said are out on the street right now for all the remainder of uh, the Jeff City High School. Nat Holtz, the construction manager, will total those, will issue the contracts. They will then report to Dr. Lenticum, Jason Hoffman, and the Board of Education for the final GMP, final guaranteed maximum price of the project. So we'll know that um, late October. Um, You've seen some trailers out there, like I mentioned out on the uh, tennis courts. And also at Jefferson City, uh, at Nichols Career Center along Jackson Street. Um, those will stay for the, the duration of the project. Those are needed uh, also as phasing. So those won't go away until sometime, probably the summer of 2020. Uh, they're needed for, for occupancy right now. <clears throat> August 29th, um, we had a pre-bid conference for everybody interested in bidding all that work that's out on the street. Uh, so the design team now is fielding those questions. When I say drawings and the specs are out on the street, 
one set of drawings for this size of project is 400 sheets. We literally have people in our office that can't pick up a set of drawings. Um, and those of us that can, we grunt a lot when we pick them up. So the, these are massive sets of documents uh, going out. Thank God a lot of things are electronic now. <clears throat> so any questions on Jefferson City High School? We also see a lot of site utility work along Lafayette Street. Okay. So moving to Capital City High School, the early site work is complete. By early, I mean site work for the building. So we've seen a lot of dust fly, a lot of rock move, a lot of soil move. That's just for the buildings. It's probably three-fifths of the site work. We have another two-fifths coming uh, very soon, which will be working on the practice fields that are over there. Practice football, practice soccer, uh, practice baseball, and part of the tennis courts. So that's in the second site work package that's, that's coming out soon. As far as percent of work complete over there, you see the steel frame. 50% uh, of the footings are done. 65% of the steel frame and decking are done. So it, it looks big. There's still a whole other part coming over towards the gymnasiums uh, as far as steel framing goes. Uh, and <clears throat> also there are special permits being issued by the, not special, but building permits being issued by the city of Jefferson, special permits being issued by the state and federal governments for the, the streams and the mitigation of those streams in there. Also in terms of runoff, uh, water, storm sewer is a big issue these days. That is, that is designed so that everybody understands, that's designed so that if, before this construction started there was runoff going into streams and creeks. The new construction has to control that water and release it at the same rate as if there were no building and parking or slower. That's checked by the design engineers, that's checked by the city engineers, county, uh, state, and federal. So in terms of runoff water, that is collected in ponds or temporary ponds. Uh, we had the same issue over at Elias. We had to build underground storage under the parking lot so that that water gets released at or slower than the rate before the building came. So that, that's a big deal these days in a lot of uh, communities. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, the, the plumbing over at Capital C High School, that's all underground right now. So it's only about 10%. The HVAC is at 15%. But this is underground work that we never see. Electrical is at 3%. Um, oh, also the, the <coughs> governing authorities have to issue occupancy permits at both Jeff City High School and Capital City High School. So as these individual areas are finished at Jeff City High School, code inspectors, local fire inspectors, the fire chief, fire department, they all come in and inspect it to make sure and give us an actual certificate for occupancy. So that's happening for areas of Jeff City High School that get finished. Capital City High School will only have two phases. Uh, when the first wave of students come, classrooms and admin will be open. Uh, the second phase, I'm, I'm oversimplifying here, but the second phase will basically be the rest of the classrooms, gymnasiums, uh, that kind of thing. You, you have seen, uh, as far as what's on site over there, you see the framing. In September 17th, uh, massive precast panels of concrete with a brick veneer will start showing up. You'll see cranes on site. Those will start showing up and moving uh, stuff into place. So that's, where's Ryan? Ryan, I'll take a picture of that one. Yeah. It's going to kind of start coming in. Um, almost got it, guys. Uh, I guess the only other thing I wanted to say was there's, a, there's an extreme uh, collaboration effort. We've got the design team, we've got governing officials, we've got the, the fire department, the, the local code officials. Um, working on this thing, so it's really it's really a, a monumental task. As far as the general contractor, the construction manager, and subcontractors, uh, they are working very hard and working every day to maintain safety over there. Another design effort that's going on is furniture. Imagine a furniture purchase for two projects like this, so that's basically still in the design process. Furniture has um, electrical hookups, some of it does, it has HVAC hookups, plumbing hookups, so 
a lot of things going out there. You'll see that coming out to bid. That'll hit the street again. Again, that'll be another wave of local contracts we hope to be awarded. Um, also, we are trying to nail down the graphics in the buildings. I know there's a committee uh, of citizens and I believe Firehouse is helping with that effort, Firehouse Design. Um, those are, that, that work is also being bid for graphics on the walls, striping on the fields, that sort of thing. So the original goal to have two, you know, very distinct high schools that are conducive to learning, safety, and community pride. In our opinion, that's going very well. It's extremely busy, a lot going on, but we think that goal is being met. Any questions? Yes, yes sir. Uh, what's the estimated date that uh, the new high school will be open and it will be, will be phased in, like yeah. freshman, sophomore, yes, senior kind of thing? Yeah, it will be phased in um, the fall of 2019, but it's hard to believe looking at the building right now. The fall of 2019 will receive the first wave. Um, and that's when I mentioned that enough classrooms to receive them, an admin uh, and kitchen will be in place. Following that though, January of 2020 is everything else. So gymnasiums, uh, the remainder, other two floors of classrooms, things like that. That answer your question? Yeah. And again, we'll have, that will be extremely segregated. We'll have construction going on in one area and school going on in another. And they might hear a little noise. So it's going to be safe. Anything else? Thank you all. Thank you, Gary. I think in the... Just stay put. I think an important part of that is, is and thank you, Kerry. Uh, a lot of different parts, a lot of moving parts. Uh, when Kerry uh, said the fall of 19, that's also uh, this coming August. Um, so it's for a long time we've said fall of 19 that it's out. How am I doing? Yeah. yeah. Sue, I'm in a little mess here to grab some. So anyway, um, a lot of different parts to it. Kerry, thank you. Um, it, it is going to. Be, it's a. It's a working. A work in progress. We talk about being stronger together. We all have different definitions of what stronger together means. And when we talk about the collaborative effort that we talked about, I could give, I'm a note card guy. I carry note cards all the time. If I give everybody here a note card and ask you to write down what does it mean stronger together, we'd have all different brief, um, thoughts of what that should look like. So trying to use those principles that everybody brings a different perspective of that, but we are in this together and uh, we're excited about the progress. So any other questions on the, at, at Capital City High School or Jeff City High School on any parts of that? You'd like to talk about? Yes, thank you. What's happening in Nichols Career Center as far as what kind of classes in the done? The Nichols Career Center is a part of the renovations as well. Nichols Career Center has, um, was designed as in to serve Jeff City High School plus the surrounding school, Sydney schools, thank you, the, the surrounding Sydney schools. Uh, but because Jeff City High School had um, was out of space, it expanded to where it had many classes that were just Jeff City High School. My first year teaching was at Jeff City High School. I was in Nichols Career Center with all Jeff City High School students. So with having uh, fewer students there, with having two high schools for one, we hope the, the long term is that we can get to where it is more serving just of the surrounding city schools. Um, but there are renovations that are taking place there. Uh, so right now, basically renovations of the current classrooms. Um, yeah, any other further from details? A, from a facility standpoint, Nichols Career Center, the quality of renovations is just as heavy as the rest of the school. It's completely renovated. Walls come out, doors get changed out, new finishes, new HVAC, new lighting. So it, it too is a very heavy renovation. What are they doing now? Are they in the temporary classroom? No, I'm sorry. That, that's in the base. So yes, they're 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 still in the old now. Okay, it gets taken down. That's uh, two different phases. It will take down parts of Nichols to get the temporary oh, classrooms. Yeah, get rid of that. Areas we can't take down, we will do over the summer. Yeah. So, but it gets completely rid of it. And the biggest challenge is Jeff City High School versus Capital City High School because we still have students there. We can ensure a positive learning environment while ensuring that students are safe. Um, as we continue, so thanks to uh, all of those that have been involved with that work. So, um, so anyway, we'll talk about boundary lines. So, with that being said, at Capital City High School, as a part of J plus C, 
uh, that our community supported and uh, we appreciate their, their willingness to partner with us uh, as in having confidence uh, to build a second high school or now Capital City High School with that. We, from the very beginning, we said that we anticipated some boundary line tweaks because the location of Capital City High School is within Cedar Hill Elementary School's boundary line, which feeds Lewis and Clark. Um, from the beginning, Lewis and Clark would feed Jeff City High School and Thomas Jefferson would feed Capital City High School. Um, so when we look at boundary wise, uh, trying to make sure that let's fix our TJ and our LC boundary lines because they will feed um, both of our high schools. So we anticipated some tweaks and, um, and, and that's what we're looking at, at doing. Um, some have a, and let me back up, in 1993 when Thomas Jefferson and, and uh, Lewis and Clark, when the boundary lines were drawn, two guiding factors led that effort and it was to try to keep enrollment the same between the two and then try to keep the poverty rate same or similar between the two. They have held two for the most part over the 25 years. I've had somebody say, well, you know, the new middle schools, well, that, those new middle schools was 25 years ago, but some still call them the new middle schools. Um, but they have held true, pr pretty close. Um, this year enrollment, hold on. Does anybody know that off the top of your head comparison between the two? Should have this so this year's enrollment right now at Thomas Jefferson is a thousand and eighty three, and at Lewis and Clark it's nine sixty nine. Okay, so that is a hundred and fourteen more students at um, Thomas Jefferson and the Nurse Lewis Club. Um, the poverty rate is 57.71 at TJ. You can write anything down. This will all be on our website today by the end of the day. Uh, we have some updated numbers and these will all be on our district website today. You can write anything down. Um, poverty is 57.71 at TJ and 62.84 um, at Lewis and Clark. So, 5% is the change um, difference uh, between the two on the poverty rates. Um, two years ago, it was flipped. Uh, the, the poverty rate was higher at uh, Thomas Jefferson and Lewis and Clark. Um, but over the last 25 years, I would be safe to say that Lewis and Clark has been a little bit higher than Thomas Jefferson on average. But there have been some years um, where they've been exactly the same, where TJ has been higher. But as a whole, it has been higher at um, Lewis and Clark. The diversity at Thomas Jefferson this year is 41.74, and at Lewis and Clark this year it's 38.29. So it's about three and a half percent higher at Thomas Jefferson uh, this year than at Lewis and Clark. So trying to keep the similarities um, with the boundary lines, those two guiding factors in 1993, we're still trying to have that guide us, not go away from those. There are some that have some views. You may be sitting here as in, why don't you just draw a line down the middle and then let the chip fall as they may on enrollment and uh, poverty rates between the two. Um, th that's not something from the beginning. We wanted to make sure that we didn't have the haves and the have-nots. We want to have very similar between the two. Um, there were some folks, if you live on Cedar Hill, west on C, you are much closer to Thomas Jefferson than you are to Lewis Park. Okay? That was drawn, and the reason why I believe I wasn't here, two of the different options they were considering to have the poverty rates and enrollment rates similar between the two. Because there are some that said, why don't you fix what was screwed up in 93? Well, we, and we love to draw a line right down the middle between the two. And when we did that, there was about 300 more students um, on one, and the poverty rates was about 20% difference if you just drew a line down the middle. There are some that say, hey, just do that. Folks will like it, they can move. That's one way of looking at it. We looked at it as we want to have all of our students have the same exact opportunities where you attend school. Um, at the end, of, excuse me. At the end of the day, we want all of our 11 elementary schools to where, regardless of where you attend, it's a quality education. And with that being said, we recognize there are neighborhood schools, there's traditions, all of those things. But our job is to one, try to continue to improve to where, regardless of where you go to school, uh, the differences with that. 
Um, so, with the boundaries that we started here, the anticipated tweaks because Capital City High School is located in the Lewis and Clark, uh, current Lewis and Clark boundary lines, we anticipated some tweaks. Um, so, when we started out here having discussions, um, we had a boundary committee. Uh, first meeting was in December, I believe. Uh, got that right here. Again, this stuff will be on our, it's, I think this is actually on there now. Would you go to, uh, you're where you're already at here. So, go back, would you, uh, just to the home page. We'll have this up, right here is our home page, jcschools.us. On the left here is JCPS Boundary Committee. You can click on that, it has all the information. Before you do that, would you go back here, go to About Us, please, and go to our district maps. So would you go down here to our district map, please, thank you. So this is our school district boundary lines. Scroll down just one. Okay, so uh, we're sitting right here at the Motor Center. Um, we go from Center Town to Holt Summit um, to before you cross the bridge, before you head to Lynn or Westphalia. This here is part of, part of Moral Heights before you come across the Osage River on the uh, east side uh, of 1563. And this is our district boundary lines. Okay, so from all aspects, we're not just here in Jefferson City, but then our 11 elementary schools are in 11 different colors, okay? And just a couple, uh, a couple opinions or thoughts. When you look at this, I've been asked many times, why do we have these nuggets and all these different lines? Why do we just draw some? That's fair. Uh, first off, Jefferson City, I mean, to me, why you build is not face north, south, east, and west. Okay, well, we do have this thing called the river uh, here in Jefferson City. It's very rocky. We have hills and hollers and creeks and so forth, so you have to do what you have to do. So Jefferson City is not just on a straight flat map. I grew up in northwest Missouri on a farm, and we had gravel roads that went north, we had gravel roads that went east, and uh, there would be sections. We don't have that here in Jefferson City. So, and Jefferson City has grown. Uh, you can say West Elementary sits right here. Is it at the west part of our district boundary lines? No, West Elementary sits right here. You could say, why is it west on the west end? Okay, well, it's not. South, uh, east is right here. Well, you could say farther east, north, uh, north elementary. Uh, that, in a sense, is northeast from where we are now, but it is north of the river. I mean, it's northeast of the river, but uh, it is north of the river. It's both safe here uh, many, many times. So, boundary lines are drawn. Boundary lines are a very sensitive topic, and uh, as a school district, we have not visited those on a regular basis. Some schools visit those every year. Uh, it's something that we, and through our policy committee, feel that we need to look at and review every three to five years um, to at least, are they where they need to be? Do they need to be tweaked? Involve folks in the process and work through that. So that is a shift from how we have been maybe in the past as a school district, because Pioneer Trail was in 2007, is that Pioneer Trail, boundary lines, here's Pioneer, I'll take this down, Pioneer Trail um, was right here, some boundary lines, uh, Blossom uh, here in the green, uh, Southwest Early Childhood Center, uh, used to be an elementary school, now it's an early childhood center. So, with all that being said, a lot of things when we look at boundary lines. So, let's go back to um, any initial, just, I know that was 80,000 feet, but any initial thoughts on our current boundary lines? Yes. Well, I'm one of the people, where our family, and I'm honest in the uh, Cedar Hill issue. Okay. Because, and I'm also on the uh, Homeowners Association board. Okay. And we're finding that the kids in our area are getting on a bus, like for the middle school, you know, one's five minutes from our house. They're on, a, I could come here this morning because my kids get on a bus an hour plus before school, drive around all the way through past the uh, junior high to go to the one on the other side of town. Is in past Tom Chairs and yeah, Lewis I mean, Clark? Yes, because they go down Frog Hollow, go all the way down through there. They come out near Dick's Road, go all the way back to uh, um, Thomas Jefferson while you know they're on the bus, they get picked up at 6 40 in the morning for school to start at eight. I mean, so and see so we, we have to yell you know, driving back and forth with kids. TJ is what five minutes from the other direction? Why are we, you know, having to do that for our section of the, the, the schools, um, you're cutting a whole bunch of people out. Right. 
That's a fair question. Um, and from common sense, as we look at geographically, uh, you could ask why is that? Would you go to our district? Would you go to the boundary and go to option C, which has our current middle school boundary lines? And I will address that directly. So option C, so scroll down. So other than this part, scroll down just a little bit and would you enlarge it just to shade? A plus in the lower uh, lower right, maybe there we go. One more, and scroll down, please. Perfect. Okay. Now you can't see center town over here. Um, so, if, if you're are you in this area, the western part of Cedar Hill, we're over near C in 179. Okay. So, to answer that question, I think it's a fair question. We felt, I believe, the Board of Education, the community from 1993, I had a conversation with Dr. Straub, the superintendent before, when the decision was made of why that I asked the question. So, why, if you live clear out here on C, how can I justify looking papers in the eye and say, yep, yeah, you've got to go to Lewis and Clark? You can disagree, we can agree to disagree. The decision was made. Now, there are other ways that we looked at uh, on the options, which those considerations on, you know, do you put Cedar Hill within Thomas Jefferson? We looked at moving uh, West Elementary, half of Bel Air, other schools switching those um, to, because some feel that way, fix it. We've been, I mean, I literally have said to me, we've been screwed since 93, why don't you fix it? That's fair. Uh, the decision was made from 93 to we want to keep, and the, the lines were drawn at that time to keep them very similar. It's been that way over 25 years, and as we look at changes, we try to minimize the number of students being affected by this change. When we said throughout the campaign, we anticipated some tweaks, not wholesale changes. Some would say, why don't you just fix the whole thing? We're doing some tweaks here, considering the tweaks. It's been nine months, but it's been very controversial with some tweaks. I can't imagine what would happen if we looked at changing all these other elementary schools, to be real honest. We need to do that. We will as we, uh, as we go forward. So, to answer your questions, if you live in this area and wonder why you have to come this far, my answer is because the uh, poverty rates are trying to keep things similar between the schools. And I know that's where you live. I recognize that. And you may say you should change that. That's fair. Uh, we're not at this time. That may be looked at down the road, but it's not at this time. I mean, it's like the new high school where we are, and honestly, um, one of the kids that go in, they live from, they can see the lights of the junior high school. They live one mile from where the new high school is, and it's straight down the same road. They're going to be going to the old high school? We're going to be, I mean, straight down the road from us where the new high school is. Why are we going to drive, you know, seven or eight miles instead of driving one mile? I mean, the poverty rates, I thought that um, the uh, affirmative action is not what we, you know, it wasn't the only reason why you think it's community schools, you know, community information, right. not because we live, you know, well, I, I can afford to live in this one section so that you decide you're too many of you are too wealthy or whatever. You gotta drive, you know, another half hour to go to school. I'm not sure how it was presented in '93, but I, I do. I, know, I don't care about '93. I, I care about that. I understand that, but I'm saying when decisions made in '93, it's still a decision was made. We are going to try that a community wide that every school, all schools, have the same opportunity regardless where you go to school, and the size of school and the poverty of having very similar. Um, Learning is different if you grow up in poverty. My first year teaching was 99. I understand poverty and what we're talking about here, but we are also talking about all the parents and all the people who live where we are. Right. Why, I mean, it's it's becoming the taxi service, and I understand that every parent goes through this, right. but why are we, you know, required to drive and spend all of our time going, out, you know, it doesn't seem like it um, to, you know, sitting where you're at, but for us, you know, back and forth, back and forth, all the way on the other side of town, going through the traffic, going through the other stuff. Right. It's, I understand we're talking about poverty rates, but it's unfair to the people who live closest to the school. It's community. It's not, you know, you can spend all day talking about, well, you, you, you make more than this person, this person makes less. Why, I, you're gerrymandering, gerrymandering, for not, I, I can't get the 
Correct word there. It's right. just, and then for us, if we want to go to this new school, right. because we live close, is there an ability for us to do that? Can I take my kids there without using the busing? Can I pay for tuition because it's you know better for my kids to be closer to my house? Um, what? You can apply for special permission. Okay, you go to Thomas Jefferson, you, you know where you reside. If you live within Thomas Jefferson boundary lines, you will uh, uh, attend Jefferson City High School. If you live within Lewis Park, you will attend Jefferson City High School. If you want to apply for special permission, you can do that as we allow now. A lot of folks. Now, we are trying to tighten that between both schools because we know we're talking with other schools, other districts, when they added a the high school, when they have two, there's a uh, competition, there's recruiting. We want to make sure we have a tight process for special permission. Um, right now, we're at 11 elementary schools. We have students applying for special permission. We have students at our middle school applying for special permission. Some are granted, some are not. Uh, we're trying not to split families uh, through this process and the transition lines as kind of a guiding factor. Uh, so yes, you can apply for that. Can I guarantee that? No, I can't. Uh, because at the end of the day, we're asking folks, this is square, and that's why we want to try to have folks have a year notice a year in advance. So if they do want to move accordingly, I mean, we're not just drawing lines if you like to get over it, but we're trying to involve folks. Um, we've had 74 different opportunities. Today is number 73. We're having community opportunities to voice and trying to come up with options that we know we're not going to make everyone happy. To try to use some common sense and have empathy and understand from your perspective. From a common sense of ge geographically, I completely understand it. But I also, a guiding factor from 25 years ago, and I agree it is today, is still influencing. We want to ensure try to have very similar schools, and those lines are really important. So um, we may agree to disagree. Um, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and then if you want to carry this on here later, I'd be more than happy. Any other questions on that? I'll piggyback a couple of questions Absolutely. on that particular issue. Uh, you would indicated, I think the spread now is about 5% on Correct. that particular rate. 20 was too high. Do we have a target number that we're trying to hit? Well, like our target a maximum number that we want to... We have said, to, and through the, uh, the boundary committee, that when the poverty rate gets 10% or more, two consecutive years, we need to revisit boundary lines. I hope we will be doing that anyway, but having that officially in writing, uh, the target, our demographer uh, that we had hired, uh, they, their guide across the nation, if, if you want to try to keep similarities, was 10%. Okay? Well, I thought 5% was too high. Uh, to be real honest, we want to try to have it exactly the same is the goal, uh, but that's not happening right now. Um, and we're not sure what will happen with the opening of Capital City High School. Um, Jeff City High School, I think, will, um, I don't want to say, will not close the socks off, but it's going to be awesome. And because uh, I've been saying, oh, I'm stuck in this, there's not going to be stuck with this old school. You're going to have the tradition of that and the renovated. Uh, it, it's going to be an awesome school. So the goal is similar, but the target of not having more than 10 and that we will revisit and try to make changes accordingly if it gets 10% or more difference between the two. Is that a federally, is that a federal number? No, not the 10%, the database that we're using for what the rates are. On the poverty? Yeah. Those that qualify for free and reduced lunches. So that is a federal. Those have changed over time. Uh, I started there earlier. We're going to be we're at sixty percent this year. Um, it was 26, 27 percent in 95, 96. So it has changed over time. Our demographics have changed um, with that, but it is a federal that those qualify for free and reduced lunches. So it's a free and reduced number. Right? Yes, it is. Okay. And that's what most all schools use across the country for that. Is it an absolutely uh, a reliable or valid number? Uh, it is one way of measuring in the best numbers and solutions. One more question. Um, and I certainly understand. I think it's important to keep those numbers as close as we can also just right. be, because of various issues. Uh, but the idea that a child could go to school at East or Pioneer Trail and the numbers would be, let's say, markedly different, do we think that they're not receiving the same education from the standpoint of resources that we're providing through the school system, the types of teachers that are there? I mean, I certainly get that a, a child in a certain home might be disadvantaged, but right. within the school itself, are we, are we not able to move resources around in order to provide the same education no matter what? that rate might be. Right. Great question, and Brian can elaborate more, but uh, Brian, I would say that our higher poverty schools, we have more resources. Um, 
we have schools that we're talking about South Elementary in the last few days of their potentially impacted here of the extra resources they have because of the higher poverty rates in uh, some of our schools. So uh, at the end of the day, we want to ensure that we do have all the resources. Can they be moved? Um, there's more resources at East Elementary than Pioneer Trail. East Elementary is our second smallest elementary school. Um, that is, I don't want to say it's by design, but we want our higher poverty schools to have small enrollments, smaller class sizes. Um, and that's something that is, we're trying to keep uh, as a part of this moving forward. But fair question. I don't know if that's enough. The, yes, they are. I mean, uh, our, our reading coaches, um, right. we have more of those uh, in our higher poverty schools than we do in some that are lower poverty schools. Just for example. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're in addition we're also asking for, from a board perspective, looking at uh, demographics, not just the diversity in terms of minority populations as well. So I mean those numbers are available and so it's not just that single number of pre reduced. We're also say considering um, a minority population in that discussion. And we have those will be on our website today. Uh, for all the JC schools that will be within the boundary committee tab as part of the Okay, so I want to look, again, Am I correct that it's the board's decision or is it the, super, the board's decision? It's the board of education decision. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you look at your boundary lines with regards to the outside, whether Jamestown or New Bloomfield or Blair Oaks, um, those are community wide. But within our district boundary lines, that is within internally our board of education. I mean, those type of things going to the voters, if you were looking at moving your boundary lines, Saying, hey, Blair Oaks, give us this portion, or Southern Road, we'll make it. Those, uh, we can make those changes, but internally, uh, those are Board of Education uh, approval. Okay. Do we also have the property tax versus the population? Because in some of the uh, lower income areas, a lot of people are renters versus property owners. I don't know, do we have those numbers as well? To know the number that are. Well, I mean, it's like with this boundary between these two new schools or between the junior highs. Um, do we know one side where the property taxes are coming from versus the other side? Versus um, just the free reduce? Specifically, Jason, do you know as far as what's on between the two, specifically broken down between the two? I mean, between the middle school boundary lines here? Yeah. Or is that what you're asking there? Yeah, I mean, right now, just because we know the middle school boundary lines, we know if they're equal between both sides where property taxes are coming from because that's where the school board gets their money. I mean, well, it's, the school as in the, the, the entire yes yeah, so right, entire absolutely. but when you have one versus another and we're gonna have a new high school so you can have a bit of I'm just curious where's the money coming from? Are they we just cutting our areas irrespective of I see we're saying it, it comes from here and to know the difference between what the property taxes and what they're paying in yeah. South Elementary versus Cedar Hill etc. We don't have that information. Is that safe to say Jason? So the overwhelming majority of property taxes actually come from commercial property taxes. It's more than 50% of it all comes from commercial property taxes. So where a base factory might sit would be a big driver. So we wouldn't distribute our property tax money in one elementary school just because it has a big factory there and that none of it, it's the property taxes are collected district wide and be distributed for all students. Third question. Are there anything else on that? So I want to look at the, the, the scenarios that basically narrowed to three uh, considerations. We've shared these, so, so let me back up here. So the, the portion here, I, want, I just want you to see. So right now, if it's in the pink, which feeds Thomas Jefferson, and in the light blue, feeds Lewis and Clark, okay? Uh, and right now, in the pink has, I shared earlier, 114 more students, 3% um, higher diversity, um, here, five percent higher, uh, free and reduced uh, in the blue. Okay, so this is what we currently have. One portion we split Thorpe Gordon Elementary School right now, as far as some of our students in Thorpe Gordon, when they finish fifth grade, some go to Thomas Jefferson. If you live in this portion right here, the blue is around this. If you live right here, you go to Thomas Jefferson. The other students in Thorpe Gordon go to. Lewis and Clark Elementary. So, I uh, in all, all three of the scenarios we have right now, all of uh, Fort Warren will be attending Lewis and Clark and then to uh, Jesse High School uh, with that. 
So let's go to, let's go back and can we just go to uh, option A? Again, we'll have these updated here today. Option A, we're looking here, and I may have to go back to our district right here and scroll down. This right here is uh, Cedar Hills by the night. Okay, and if you're 179 and C, are you in this area right in here somewhere? Okay, in this area right here. This here is Cedar Hill. In option A, it is basically moving this portion here, which is up Cedar Hill. Go to our district boundary map, real, district map real quick. So what we're saying is the top portion of this is what we're looking at. And right in here is what we're looking at in option A. It would be moved from here. Cedar Hill would be moved into the purple side. Okay, so go back to that, please. Okay, so here we are. Boundary lines here of South Elementary instead of here, this purple. This is added to it. This, this portion here that's been in Cedar Hill would switch to a South Elementary School. Okay, so that is a, a consideration when we do that. There were five goals at the beginning of the committee. Poverty rates similar between the two. Enrollment rates similar between the two. Trying to have the location of Capital City High School within the city school that it serves. Okay, that was a third. Trying to not split any of our elementary schools was a goal. And then trying to minimize the number of students changing from where they have been. Those are the five goals at the beginning um, with the committee as we did this. Uh, this option actually means all five of those um, as we look at those um, the different goals. So this here is changing, so none of our elementary schools are split. This year uh, would then become a fourth side. Any questions on this option? Where's the high school? The new high school. This is right there. Right there. Okay. Um, go to our district map. So one question has been, uh, you know, why didn't we put it out on the west side? Okay. Um, city high school is right here. Uh, right here, Capital City High School. Since they got one here, you got one here. First of all, okay, it was taken. Um, you know, the big controversy of how that went about. I can't think about that. We own the land and pay for it. And so we did look at some other options. West, we own this land. We're concerned we're willing to go through this process. So right here in the big picture, but here is, and here's Jeff. Okay. Options on this. So let's go to option B. Option B is the same as option A. Option A does not go into effect. Scroll down. We'll have these numbers on This is not going to effect until middle school and high school age meeting. By the way, in this portion, they still attend Cedar Hill. But then we would split Cedar Hill like we do for Gordon now. By the right here in option B. Once I got to the middle school age, I would then If I live, live in this portion, the split uh, Hill, which one of our goals was to not split any of our own schools like we currently do for, uh, would be split. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay. Okay, so let's go to option C. Option C is looking at. So option C is leaving it. All of the purple up here, up would be the, the left one here. So right here, the pink is Thorpe Gordon. This downtown portion of Thorpe Gordon currently goes to We're going to have all of Thorpe go to LD's Thorpe Gordon. Um, on this, it's leaving it in this portion of the park. So, as far as not located within the area of the search, you can live right here, you can drive to the city high school to um, city high school. So, if you drive by Capitol, we'd like it to reside in the area. That was one of the goals we said at the beginning. Um, but it's the way the pros and cons and all this. So, any questions on this? This is 
This is scenario C. So basically, here's where we are. Next uh, Tuesday night, we have a board meeting. We'll explore looking at these three options. We'll update the data today. Keep wants to see um, what does the diversity look like under this scenario if we made these changes. Um, we went through again yesterday with a fine tooth comb to make sure our numbers were accurate. It is very challenging to determine what will people do. So you can't, uh, it's not field of dreams, but they will come to anticipate based upon the, the facts of the folks that we have right now. So that is, that is what we did. And trying to anticipate the number of number of uh, the, the number of students. For example, um, Cedar Hill in option A, the students that these if the band rallies are, are, are drawn here on A and they're redrawn, those students would then be attending in this portion right here, they would be attending Thomas Jefferson instead of Lewis and Clark and then Capital City. Jefferson City High School. Right now, it's seat of the number of students in that area, K through five, that's six grade levels. Well, we'll never have six grade levels in Thomas Jefferson, we'll have three grade levels. So we took half of those students to project to try to look at it from a middle school standpoint. And then we adjusted accordingly on the poverty rates and uh, the, uh, uh, the diversity to try to be as accurate as we could that we could defend uh, our numbers of here. Any questions on that? I threw it down up there, but I did not. Um, it, it is a controversial area, so I will say. Through challenges, can we work stronger together? Can we agree to disagree? Um, you know, folks may say you're not even listening. Uh, that's fair. Um, we want to try to have understanding and to try to work through this as best we can because it, it's why some schools don't even visit Boundary Heights because it is a very controversial topic. Frank, how do they do it in Columbia? Do they how do they do it? They change. They look at changing the boundary lines every year. Uh, they are updating, um, updating their the process that they go through. They sent me that of what they've done. I'm trying to ask them hey, what worked, what didn't work, what would you do differently? Uh, they just do it on a more regular basis. They don't have 74 community opportunities to voice their opinion. Um, they have a committee, make a decision, go forward with it, and um, it's not a perfect process. I think they would say, and I should have attended this set, uh, but they have, they have a culture there been, because of the growth in Columbia versus here, there's been a little bit more of a, a, a mindset of, of changing boundary lines on a more regular basis. If you say that's near the end of the Well, I, that's, that's not for me to argue. I know they haven't had as many when they made changes. They haven't had seven or different opportunities for folks to voice their opinion. But does that say that they didn't listen to me? That's not for me to say. I, I didn't mean to imply that. Well, that's me to this side. Of this type. They could have had other ones that I'm not even aware of, so I want to be careful to say that. I'll hear about today, so I'm going to watch it. Kind of You're right. I don't know. I'll just stop. Any other questions on that? Okay, well, I appreciate uh, you guys being here. It's 7.54. We're going to talk about reading. Let me, and, and, and if you need to go, because it is 7.54, we need to ensure that all our kids can read. And uh, that is kind of like, well, duh, why not? You're, you're right. It should be. We have not been doing as well. That's as soon as we should. And uh, so that is our number one priority. So we are super excited about that. The critical thinking skills, when you talk about literacy, you've got the reading, you've got writing. Uh, writing actually those critical thinking skills to help when, when you're a, a good writer. And we know the importance of that. But we're starting out with the basic 101 and making sure that our students can read. Um, and so we have plans and we're doing that we're trying to start at home. Um, and ensuring through a birth to pre-K, what that looks like at home, and encouraging parents to read with their children. Um, we, we know that's important. Um, once they, and, and expose them uh, to reading. Once they get to school, your research would say, students learn to read between ages five and seven, is what the research would say. That's kindergarten through second grade is the general rule. Only we'll make sure we're doing that right. Um, and, and how we do that. So that is something that our learning folks and our elementary are really taking a step back and assess how we're doing that and making changes accordingly with that. Grades three through five, we want to make sure and grow um, those to, to improve where we are, then also intervene as needed and catch up if needed uh, in grades three through five and the importance of that. So we're excited about that. And then the six through 12 standpoint of across all content areas. Traditionally, you have your uh, sophomore biology teacher. I'm a biology teacher. It's 
not, I, it's not my fault that Junior Ray didn't teach him how to read, or Junior Ray teacher said, it's not my fault that Junior Ray didn't teach him how to read. And all the teachers say, well, I'm going to prepare this, why did they just try to read growing up? That is a skewed version of how some might look at things. Um, it's all of our responsibility. So we're asking the community, we're asking parents, we're asking our staff uh, across all content areas uh, of reading as a part of everything we do. So all K through 12, whether it's a weightlifting class, whether it's a music class, reading is a part of that. And uh, that's something that's not going to go away, and we are super, uh, super excited about that. So that was a two-minute overview of reading, but I want it to be a respectful of time. And I also want it to be available if you want to stay here. Uh, after all, stay here as long as you want to talk about any of these topics or any of these questions or any questions you might have. You guys have any other questions for me? Yeah, go ahead. You're fine. I'm just curious why. No, you're good. Okay, sir. Uh, why you're moving? Was it the, the school? I don't remember the name of the school up here. That's Pet Path. Uh, Thorpe Gordon. Thorpe Gordon. Yeah. Why are because they're closer to Thomas Jefferson? Why don't you move the entire school? I would choose Lewis and Clark that direction and move Cedar Hill the other way so that they're in the same district with the new school. Thorpe Gordon is all that it is going to. That's the chain. All of Thorpe Gordon is going to Lewis and Clark. But Cedar Hill is not. I mean, you're saying, why didn't you have this on that side? I mean, it's. So it is this portion of Cedar Hill was not, but Thorpe is okay. moved to where it all. How big is Cedar Hill? I can't figure out. Go uh, to the district map, which is the second one. This is here's what we're going to look at. Right here is Cedar Hill. So purple up there, is, or pink is Thorpe. Yeah, pink is Thorpe. It's uh, salmon, or whatever you know. What do we call this color here? Is Cedar Hill. This here is South. This here is Thorpe. Okay, that's just weird. That's fair. I, I understand. I understand. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay. 